Hello everyone. So in this tutorial, we are going to learn how to create an account for an educator on the MIT App Inventor. So the first step we are going to do is to make sure we have an adult email. We are going to use a child email. There will be a series of authentications from the parents. But for this case, we are going to use an adult email and uh, we log in to create an account. So the first thing we'll do is to go to the uh, app inventor. I already have it cached. So for you who has not yet tried this website, we all so type this. A web bar then you go to this site from this site we are going to go to for educators and then we are going to click on AI with app inventor and then we'll choose which app we want to learn how to create so these are tutorials we have personal image classifier the PI Kabul the difficulty level is intermediate the resource type it's a tutorial uh, the subject is under computer science. Um, the grade level is for age 6 to 8 and also 9 to 12. So there are different ones here, but for us, I want us to make a simple chat GPT app. So we click on this, it will open in a new tab, and then we will go to simple chat GPT app tutorial. Opens also in a new tab. Okay, so we get into this point where we shall accept the terms of service. We read through to make sure that we are ethically using the service. So we accept the terms of service and we'll go directly to choosing the user interface. So for me, I'll choose the Neon classic is also there but let's name our app uh, okay let's cancel this uh, let's continue so we have our app here project click on it and we shall have this emulator so this is the emulator the whole space is here just zoom a little bit 90 percent all right so i can toggle the tutorial to make sure that i can see my interface as well so on the extreme left we have the user interface when you click on the user interface it toggles and you'll see the layout when you click on the layout it expands when you click on it it collapses media expands collapses all through this side are the components and then in the middle we have the emulator the emulator depends on the phone that you are designing the app for so you can choose what you're going to use here how your work will look when you put it on a tablet how your work will look when someone is using a monitor for viewing it a large screen but first of all and we are going to use a phone okay so the next thing is the screen now when you look at this side we have the screen and then here we have the screen that means this first screen that we are seeing, when you see inside our phone, the emulator, we have a screen. And then this is the same screen. So if you want another screen, we click on this plus. If you want to remove a screen, we click on the minus. So in this screen, we have the speak button, the speak text box, all through up to the notifier. So these are all components. We shall look at them in the future, the near future. And then still on the screen one, how it appears. 
from here you can change uh, different properties of the screen you can change the color for example you want to change maybe this orange to gray changes that um, all through you could you could go through and then all is that and then every time you click on anything maybe a button a text box um, a speech recognizer it all gives you the properties or rather the behavior so for example we have this speak button it will give you how it appears so maybe i can change this to blue oops looks uh gray and white okay gray and white gray and white something like that or sky blue something like that or then the text text we can make it oh go to text speak Okay, text, font type, and look for it. I can say, let me use monospace. Then width, can leave that uh, rounded. Yes. Okay, you can 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 do whatever. Font bold. Yes. Italic. No. All right. So this is how our interface will look. So when somebody downloads this app into their phone. This is how it will look. Okay, then the next step will be looking at the blocks. But before that, let's go and look at our tutorial. So when we come here, we are saying the challenge is MIT App Inventor Simple Chat GPT tutorial capturing the world's wisdom at your fingertips. So this is our Simple Chat GPT. And that is the challenge. So let's go to Simple Chat GPT tutorial. We shall come back to the setup later. So when we click on this, we look at how our Chat GPT will work. So when I click on Speak to clear this text box, and then it will write whatever I'm going to speak. So when I say Tell me about the Big Bang Theory of the Universe. After clicking Speak, and then I'll click Send to ChatGPT. Then ChatGPT is going to look for the Big Bang Theory. And after, it brings it here. But then because I don't want to read, I can click Read it for me. So then it will read. That is how it works. So the next thing, we shall go to the graphical interface. So all these buttons have been explained to us that the speak is the speak button. So this will be very important in our block development. Okay, all this, even the invisible components have been explained. So our chat board is going to be an external, uh, invisible, experimental component which is going to be very paramount because it's what we are going to it's what will look up for the things that we have spoken about the app okay then the next thing we are going to look at is the api so the api is like a bridge between two applications so your application the year three year four my, yours, whatever name you call your chatbot, and chat GPT. They need something to connect them, and that is called an API. An API is application uh, programming interface. So it is an interface that the two applications use for communicating so we shall set it up in the future okay and then now we go to the blocks directly go to blocks 
So when you see this, it says when you speak, or rather when you click on the speak button, set the text box to empty. When you also click the speak button, set the response box to also nothing. And then after that, call the speech recognizer to get the text that has been spoken. As simple as that. So let's try that out. Let's go to on the extreme right corner. You're going to have designer. So I click on blocks. And then I will toggle this off. Let me collapse it. So the first thing we are dealing with is our speak button. So I click on speak button and I look for this block. So this is a speak block. And then the next thing we are going to code is the speak uh, text box. So I click on speak text box, look for it here, drag, drop it there. Uh -huh. Another thing I need is a response box. I click on the response text box. I go and look for it. Response text box. Good. And then I need also a speech recognizer. Speech recognizer, which will get the text. Good. Now they are showing us an error here. So let's debug the error. This is the error. Saying this block needs a value block connected to its socket. Okay. So let's look for the socket. First of all, let's look for the socket. The socket is an empty text. So let me check on the text box. Uh, do we have anything? Respond text. Do you have an empty text? No. So let's go to our build in. So we look for text and we are going to get a string here. So fix our okay. okay. All right, anyway, let's first change this to text. Change this to text. Then we can fix it. Then. But, because you're telling us to respond to our, uh, yet you, you, you're setting the, the background. So how will I be able to put an empty word? So that was an error. Good. So let's move to when speech text uh, speech recognizer gets the text. What does it do? The first thing it gets is the result and also the partial. So what do we do? It does set the text box to text and then gets the results. Good. So let's go and look for our speech recognizer speech recognizer speech recognizer so when you get this or this uh, so the next thing i do is set set the speech text box to getting the results that the speech recognizer has brought so we go to the speak text box then we look for this okay we come and drop it here and then we are dealing with the text of the background and then what we are going to pick is the result so the result comes from where where does the result come from the result comes from the chatbot so where is our chatbot it's still not there so we are going to wait until we have our chat put. Okay. Do we have it? Any notifier? Do we have anything? Do we have anything? No. Do we have anything? No. We don't have our chat put. Okay. All right. So for that matter, let's first skip them. We shall come back. All right, the next thing is uh, when you click on the send button, what do you do? That's the first question. So let's look for our send button. So when I click on the send button, 
There's a new one here. Yeah, let's just put this over here. This over here. Okay. When I click on the send button, there is another control here saying do this if. So we look for the if control under the send button. Okay. Do this if. If is not there, so we go to this control button. If do, if do, if do, if else. Okay, so if this, then do that. So we have something like that. That's all. If not is empty if the textbook is not empty then call the notifier okay so not is a logic so we look for the logic if it is not empty the text is not empty inside the Speak text box. Speak text box. So it's text. Then call the notifier. So that one now is a procedure. Okay, do you have anything? Call the notifier and show progress dial. Okay. Okay. So. I pull the notifier then I show the progress dialog and then it will give us a message so we get a string an empty string and we write on it what it will show our user please wait Love you. Okay, now this way we are working on it. Okay, and then after that, say, okay, the message. I could just right click and duplicate this and I wrote I put it there and I can change the words so what's the title of the message wait okay and then after the notifier let's call the chatbot now the chatbot to converse the question so we go to fire call For the conversation so we have this dot question converse dot question so let's look for converse dot question 